welcome to episode one of the Hooked, Stitched and Glued Crochet podcast. I'm Karen and I'm coming to you from Lincolnshire, which is in the east of the UK. I'm a crochet designer and maker and you can find me on Instagram at Hooked, Stitched and Glued and on Ravelry with the same name. So grab yourself a cuppa and come and join me for some crochet chit chat. I've got my cuppa here. As you can see, I'm a fan of the bucket sized cup of tea because there is nothing worse than running out of tea. So let's get started by talking about my works in progress. One of my biggest current works in progress is an autumn granny square blanket. It is hopefully going to be sofa sized, so roughly single bed, because here in the UK at the moment there's, well, I think I think the correct words might be energy crisis, but basically the cost of energy has just gone through the roof and everyone's trying to put off putting on their central heating, even though it's starting to get quite chilly outdoors. And we are trying not to use our heating and I thought it'd be really nice to have a blanket just for the sofa so even though I've been crocheting for years I've never made a blanket completely out of granny squares and there has to be a first time for everything doesn't there so I thought this was the year to make one I made a sample one up and realised I was going to need 140 to make this blanket and I also realised that I wanted them all to look different. So I used the Granny Square generator online, I can't remember the actual name of it, I'll put the link below if you want to have a go, but it was really good because it made me up a printable schematic so I knew what colours to use in which square. So I've chosen six colours of Starcraft Special DK just because it's cheap, readily available and comes in loads and loads and loads of colours. I've picked six shades that are kind of autumnal but um, yeah, I'll show you them. So this is my little tray of squares i think i've made about 59 so far i went with the, the nice reds and greens and browns and then thought oh i really like this blue so this is petrol blue i threw it into the mix just because i thought it looked nice um so yeah i need to start joining these ones i have actually joined one row already which I'll just show you. Aren't they lovely? I haven't seen the final ends in yet. But I'm using a join as you go method. Just to try and reduce the number of ends that are left to sew in. I've chosen parchment um, Starcraft Special DK as my joining colour. Because I just thought it went really nicely with all the others. Um, you can see the bottom edge isn't done because that gets worked right at the end. I'm making the squares 10 at a time because each square has four rounds and that's a lot of ends. So I'm making 10 at a time, sewing the ends in on those 10 and then starting another row because I just think if I left all 140 squares till the end to sew the ends in, it wouldn't happen. I just wouldn't end up with a blanket. So that works quite well because you can sort of sit down and, and watch the telly and just finish off the ends. I think this is probably going to be quite a long-term blanket. My aim really is to have it done before the cold weather really kicks in so it'd be nice to have it kind of finished by about november i think but i'm really really enjoying it 
I've shied away from projects that need you to join squares because I just get fed up but I'm actually really enjoying this one and I've not kind of got bored and put it to one side and ignored it so that's a good sign for it it's it's looking like um I might actually get this one finished which will be just lovely to have something in the living room to snuggle under when the heating is just too expensive to put on my next work in progress is actually something that I made as a test project for another crocheter who is Alice at the Burrow UK and she'd written a really gorgeous blanket pattern called the Harvest Blanket and I tested it for her um, by making a cushion well I've, I've only made the front of it so far it's again in autumn colours but you can see it's got a really nice fade effect it was such an enjoyable project to test and um, just so lovely and easy to follow and it makes you should see this, the blanket you need to check out Alice's Ravelry um, to see the whole blanket I was just testing it out to make sure that the stitch pattern worked for her um, and I've got the this will be the front of a cushion but I don't know quite what to do for the back I'm thinking maybe a granny square because this is worked with two strands held together so I'm thinking maybe either a granny square or perhaps corner to corner um, just because I want the back of it to have some sort of opening and fastening because when you live in a house with two children it's no good having a crocheted cushion that is permanently stuck in its cover because at some point you are going to need to wash it that's just the way it is so I always design my cushion covers to have buttons or an envelope back or or something that lets you take the cushion out and wash the cover so if you have an idea for what I could do for the back please let me know in the comments because that would be really helpful I'm still undecided I can't actually start making the back of it until I've finished my granny square blanket because I'm using the same colours and I don't want to run out of the colours for the granny square blanket so although this is a work in progress I think the progress part is going to come a bit later on just because I'm not quite ready to do it until I've, and like I said until I've got the other colours um, finished off in the granny square blanket but yes, I'm, I'm thinking either granny square or maybe corner to corner because you could do a really nice fade still and both granny squares and corner to corner would have quite nice natural holes for popping buttons through so you wouldn't actually have to work button holes into the pattern. Anyway, if you've got an idea, please share because I'd love to hear it. You might have something that I haven't thought of and I'm always up for trying new crochet things but I think you'll agree it will make a really really fabulous cushion when it's done. Well now we've talked about whips let's move on to FOs or finished objects. I've got two to share with you today so the first one is this really really sweet plant pot holder I made this as a test for Munira at Chroma Crochet um, I'm also her tech editor and she asked me if I'd test it out and I absolutely jumped at the chance so this is made with mustard colour Rikarumi yarn oh, it's just so sweet look at the little plant Okay, don't look too closely because actually I should probably have watered that plant a little bit more than I have. But look, 
it looks so nice in cotton yarn the stitch definition on the ribbed effect just shows up so nicely in cotton and it was really enjoyable to make and really quick too wouldn't they make lovely gifts for christmas or something for someone that doesn't kill plants like i do it's gorgeous that pattern is now available on ravelry so that's chroma crochet i'll pop a link in below so you can go and get hold of that if that's something you'd like to have a go at my next fo is possibly pushing the definition of fo just a little bit because look look i haven't sewn in the ends whoops but just check these out it's got really chilly all of a sudden here in the uk just autumn has kind of jumped onto us and i looked at the thermometer the other morning and it was seven degrees when i went out to do the school run and i've been holding myself back from getting out the winter boots but at that point i decided it was really really time to put the sandals away and accept i wasn't going to be wearing them anymore and perhaps start wearing some woolies and one of the things that i thought would be really great is a pair of wrist warmers so check these out and they're gorgeous these are made using scraps of west yorkshire spinners color lab yarn um the pattern is my own it's called the she sells seashells mitten pattern and although it's a pattern written for making mittens it also includes instructions for how to make wrist warmers as well and i've i've um, made a few pairs of wrist warmers and sold them but i decided it was time to make me some and i thought Do you know i really really fancy using up those yarn scraps and making something super pretty and even though I've been all about the autumn colours just lately in my crochet. I just thought, you know, I need a rainbow. I just need a rainbow. So here they are. Oh, I love them. Love, love, love them. I just need to sew those ends in. And then I can start wearing them in the mornings because I really think it's it's that time of year now. And my daughter has seen these. And when I wrote the pattern, I also wrote a child sized pattern and she's 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 looked at these and, and she's giving me the eye, the eye that says, mummy, you need to make me some of those too. So I'm guessing the next time I speak to you that I'll either have an FO of some child sized wrist warmers or they'll be a whip. They are actually quite quick to make up, even with the colour changes. Um, I did make my life a lot easier on the ends front by carrying the cream up the inside because the height of the shells is still quite small so you're not carrying the yarn a really really far distance so you're not going to get a nasty loop that you're going to get caught on when you're wearing them um, it, it's, it was just a sensible idea because the ends are worth it for the pretty colours, but I wasn't going to spend all year sewing in ends of cream. So those, um, the pattern for the sea, seashells mittens, I'm just going to call them seashells mittens. I shouldn't have given them a tongue twister for a name really, should I? But never mind. Um, the pattern for these is available on Lovecraft's Etsy Ravelry and Ribbler. Um, if you've never heard of Ribbler before, I think it's it's um, definitely up and coming. I've only uploaded a few of my crochet patterns onto there, but it's all digital and online. And if you're thinking about being environmentally friendly and not printing out patterns, then it's probably really good for you. I've never tried um, crocheting a pattern using Ribbler yet but 
looking at the features it looks like it um, tracks where you're up to so that when you come back to it you just know where to carry on from i think it's definitely going to become more of a thing in the future but like i said the pattern is available in various places and it's been quite popular so far uh, i've been really pleased with how popular that pattern has been actually so hopefully there's lots of people wearing shell mittens around the place if you do end up making any please share with me on instagram because i'd love to see them so i've got a question for you now a question of the day because i often use commercial yarn so it comes just in a nice ball but when you've used it maybe when you've got around halfway you find it just kind of falls apart and you've got to rewind it so my question of the day today is do you do you wind yours by hand or do you use a wall winder which one are you i'm a by hand when i can't be bothered to set up the wall winder on my desk but it is so satisfying when you get these and they stack they stack because they've got flat tops and bottoms but yeah yesterday i had a big wall winding day because all of the colors for my autumn granny square blanket were falling apart anyway let me know in the comments whether you are a hand winder or a machine winder right the next section is all about my etsy shop so if you have just joined me for the crochet chat and you don't want to hear about the etsy shop that is absolutely fine thank you for joining me uh it's been lovely chatting and hopefully we'll get to chat again soon uh, if you want to hear about the etsy shop then carry on watching i've added a couple of things into the etsy shop in the last few weeks um, one of those is a crochet kit using my we three kings bauble pattern that gives you all of the materials you need including the baubles and the printed pattern for making all three bauble variations i'll just show you them look sparkly and bright i designed these um based on some inspiration i got from the costumes that the kings used to wear in the christmas play at school because i used to be a primary school teacher and those colors just remind me of all those times when i've directed the nativity play and we've had the kings and all their colors coming through and all the gold and sparkles and everything um anyway there's a printed pattern in the box and all of the materials it's a lovely box and it has everything in it except the hook and there's a reason for that because every time i've been given a crochet kit or anything like that i've never used the hook that comes in it i just haven't because if you are a crocheter you are loyal to your favorite hooks absolutely loyal you will not give up your favorite hooks for anything especially not a cheap hook that's come in a set i love my clover amour um ergonomic hooks and i would just always use one of those instead however if you're buying this kit for somebody that isn't already a crocheter that's fine i can supply hooks and that is included as an option on my etsy shop but i just don't include them as standard because it's a waste of money buying one if it's not going to be used so that's the reason my hooks don't con my kits don't contain hooks as standard another thing i've added to my etsy shop it's one of my favorite things to make 
um, is an autumn wreath with a dinky pumpkin. Um, I love making wreaths. I've got one for every season at my house and it's just so nice getting each wreath out for each season and last year I sold quite a few of these. I've only made one up for this year um, just to pop in the shop and, and see how it goes but it is quite a fun and sweet little wreath. It's, it's a 20 centimetre wreath so it's not too imposing but it would just look nice hung on the door or on the wall just to decorate for autumn and the little pumpkin is perfect for heading towards Halloween. So that's two of the latest things I've added to my Etsy shop. Um, thank you to anyone that buys anything. All of my patterns are available on Etsy and Ravelry. Um, all support is very much appreciated. I genuinely do a little happy dance every time I make a sale because it just shows that all the hard work was worth it designing it and making and putting together all of these things. So thank you for your support and thank you if you're not in a position to buy anything or um, don't want to buy anything but you give it a like or a share or a favourite all those things just help to make being an independent designer so much better anyway thank you very much for joining me for my first episode and hopefully i'll be joining you again in a few weeks with some new whips and hopefully as well some fo's so take care see you again and We'll chat soon. Thanks. Bye.